What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Cars and Things. And today, as you can see, we are inside of a car. Now, previously, we um, reviewed my new BMW. And if you're watching this for the very first time, I recently bought a BMW M2 um, LCI. And we did a review. So if you look through our videos, you should be able to find that video where we did the outside look of the BMW M2. Now, today, once again, I am sitting inside the BMW M2 and I want to do an interior review of the car. I want to have an opportunity to talk through um, some of the gadgets that the car comes with, some of the interior sort of materials that the car comes with. So stay tuned. That's going to be super, super cool. Please do not forget to like, to subscribe and to comment. Drop us a DM. It's at the coolest Coco um, on Instagram. That's where you can catch me or at snappermo underscore photography um, if you want to see more of the behind the scenes, but also more of the footage that we have shot or rather the pictures that we take as well, because we are absolute car fanatics so without any further ado let's get into the m2 internal review Wow! all right awesome let us get into um what this car actually has so i got this car with the m drivers pack so for those that don't know um what the m drivers pack um, actually entails so what the m drivers pack actually entails is you get the unlocked extended sort of top speed of the car so typically uh, bmws for example um, are capped at about 250 to about 260 uh, kilometers an hour which we obviously cannot do on south african roads but you are able to get the extended package which is called the m drivers pack that allows your top speed to go from 250 um, if i'm not mistaken i do know that my m4 um just basically just out of fact she was doing 270 and the m drivers pack on these particular m2s you can go right up to 280 kilometers an hour now that is obviously possible if you're on the track and you can reach those speeds um quite quickly so that's what's really cool so it's something i had to get with the car that i thought was like super super awesome just to have that extended sort of top speed so if you want to take me on a track and you've also got an M2 and you don't have this package, I'll race you. Woo! The Harman Kardon system is phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. I absolutely love it. I'm still not too sure um, what is louder between the Harman Kardon system, the Meridian system, or the Bang & Ol Ol Olufsen, Ol Olufsen, Bang & Olufsen um, sound system, which is absolutely cracking. All three of those, I think, are one of the best sound systems that you can get into your car. Um, and those are the ones that I've particularly just really enjoyed. So you guys know I love my music. I love my bass. Um, and I want I, I want to be able to feel each and every instrument um, throughout the whole car. Now, this particular car has about... Um, I think it's got about like four speakers in it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the M4s typically have about like seven, so it was a bit of a shift. Um, I don't get as much of a surround sound in this car in particular, but it still sounds so good. It still sounds so nice. And in case you guys didn't know, um, the sub on the BMWs is right at the front, right over there. I don't know if you guys can see. I often only have two people in my car, so it is quite banging at the front. Like, it's it's just lit, and I love it that way. I love it that way, love it that way, love it that way. The next thing that this car came with um, was a charge pad. Now, I had only seen this um, in a friend's M3, and I thought, that is so cool. Um, I don't need any cables. It's totally wireless. I literally take my phone and I place it inside here and it automatically starts charging which is super cool the only annoying thing I'll say about this though is after driving for a few hours and your phone's probably been really flat um, it gets really hot it gets really hot I think it actually slows down the charge it might damage your battery as well which is really weird i think bmw you need to look into that but it really gets super hot 
and when you pick up your phone it's like really really hot which is kind of strange it is it is super strange but it works really well like it works like flawlessly i love it because i get so annoyed when there's like so many things here like there's just so many things i've seen guys there's cool drinks all over there there's sweets there's pieces of paper like uh i'm a super clean dude like i can't i i, I absolutely can't i'm a bit ocd as well so i can't deal with too many things around the car my car always has to be clean if you've ever stepped into my car and it was dirty i was probably going through something like something deep like something deep deep like deep but it seldom happens so that's another thing that i think is fascinating about this car and that i love oh wait 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 one of the things i forgot to tell you guys about was these new interactive screens so for example in my m4 my screen did not for example do that it was not a touch screen so with these new ones these are a touch screen and it's so cool because sometimes you don't press skip you just want to like do a young little flex on your screen just to be like okay 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 what i wanted to actually show you so in case you didn't know, the M2s only have three functions. It's either you want to ride Comfort, or you want to ride, or you want to ride Sport, or you want to ride Sport Plus. There's no in between. There's no eco mode here. So if you think you want to get into a three liter, such as an M2, and go on eco mode, which I used to roll on quite a bit when I owned my 240. Um, I had an M240, I had an M235, I've mentioned that on, on the channel before And I used to be on Eco, like most of the time, like you don't need to be on Sport But now and again, like when you add a traffic light and someone is just like rum rum, And you're just like ha ha ha, you're just like Sport Plus and you're like rum, you know um, It's cool, it's cool for the flex, it's cool for fun But most of the time I ride an Eco because I'm literally either commuting to work or going to the grocery store or my wife's driving the car like it's mainly an eco you don't have to drive in sport but what i find with the m2s and this m2 in particular i can't drive it in comfort that's the lowest function i get i'm literally in sport plus every single time and that is when the car comes alive that is honestly when the car comes alive like you need to drive it in sport plus and the truth is yes it drinks because every time you just like want to hear those pops and you want to hear a bit of those bangs because it's got like very like light cute-ish ones but that is why we buy these cars so something else i wanted to show you guys is that with traction off in this car there it is it says dsc deactivated now in jumping into an lci model and i know the bmw m2 competition has this um there is no mdm function and what i love check out my bmw m4 um video mdm function uh, it literally just uses sort of the intelligence of the car and it's partially like it's almost like a medium level between like full traction off um and having you know sort of actual traction so it's kind of like a medium between the two and the computer intelligently steps in when you're making a mistake for example or when it sees that um you don't have traction it kind of gives it back to you and stuff like that so that's essentially what it is and i used to love it so much that i used to drive purely with it um on my m4 but on the m2s you literally just have traction off so it's a, it's a pure driver's car. They're literally telling you that like, yo, you need to control your shit or else you're going to die. But what I have noticed is when I just press the traction off button, when I track the, the, the traction off button is I get, I get a traction off sign. And that's of course, like the restrictive slip that comes with it. Essentially it's the MDM function here, but doesn't feel the same. With MDM function on the M4s, like it kind of lets you slip a little bit and then kind of caught you towards the end of like your move. And that's what you want to do. 
even if you're not an advanced driver, you want to be able to pull off almost like an advanced driver's like move on the road. And then it kind of catches you at the end and makes you look good. So that's actually quite nice. But I would say that it's an absolute driver's car. I know how to control my car so I can drive it traction off all the time. That's what I used to do on my M4 as well. Uh, because I, I do enjoy the little woo, woo that comes with it but i will say to you that it is dangerous if you don't know what you are doing so i thought that was pretty cool as well next really really impressive gearbox i've been really fascinated at how quickly it it literally can shift for example like how much power that it could literally just like send everywhere because this essentially is like where everything kind of happens do you know what i mean your engine may be sort of like the kitchen where everything is made but like your steering wheel and your gears literally just kind of propel you forward and backwards and stuff so um i'm always always like super excited to to jump into a bmw that has an automatic um gearbox to it because it's so good like it does what you need it to do um so nicely so i really enjoy that because even mostly on a freeway uh all i need to do even with the paddle shifters that is essentially how the bmws always beat you on the road because all i need to do is i need to literally put my foot flat on the accelerator and literally look here i'll just show you quickly and hold back this minus while my foot is absolutely flat on the accelerator and automatically what the BMW does is it drops to the lowest possible gear so you could be on a freeway and you are racing an Audi and he's on for example like his sixth gear or she's on um, her sixth gear all you basically need to do is put your foot flat on the accelerator and hold down the downshift sort of pedal and your car will literally go down to the lowest gear and typically what I've noticed was the lowest gear could be like third gear if you are at like sixth gear for example it could be like third gear and it just F's off it literally F's off so that's why BMWs are like freeway absolute kings um, because the engine allows you to do that like the gearbox allows you to do that which is really really cool it feels really good to be here the seats are comfortable they kind of hug you in I would have liked for example um, the seats like the sports seats that are often in the M4s um, I'm not too sure what they're called but um, I had it in my M4 as well um, not these my my M235 had these without the stitching of course and the badging that's there very subtle love that touch but in a car like this and an M range like I love that the badging is subtle but like come on man like make it stick out a bit more and a change of seats like certainly a change of seats like I feel like I am still sitting inside of my M240 because it is the exact same seats all you did was add stitching stitching bro come on come on i'm driving an m2 this one in particular um i bought for about about 930,000 or 950,000 somewhere around that range so if i am paying close to a million bucks just to have this car and it is an absolute pocket rocket just to have a lower M range car. Come on, bro. Come on. Come on. But absolutely love it from everything that it has, all the functions, um, all the kits that it comes up with, how it feels inside the car. You definitely need to get into one. Test drive one if you've never been in one. But they're super cool cars to be in. They are absolute driver's cars. Driver's cars. Driver's cars. That is why some of these functions, for example, um, aren't as extensive as all the other models like the bmw m4 had so much tech in it um which was super cool i loved it but this has less of the tech and once again it's driving the point home that this is a driver's car i can't wait to get it on the track but i can tell you now for sure that i am still enjoying this m2 a lot more than i enjoyed my m4 and my m4 was insane it was insane it was ridiculous but this is such a driver's car 
and it's super cool. Cool guys, so that is it for the internal review of the BMW M2. I would encourage each and every one of you get into the seat of an M2. Like you could potentially want to buy one or want to look at one, get into the seat. And in fact, like just sit in it. How do you feel? Um, what comes to mind when you're sitting in there? So it's a really great place to be. So just so you know what it in fact feels like. But when I'm telling you guys the stuff, in words, it doesn't quite come across like clearly. You certainly, certainly need to experience each and every one of these cars. You don't have to buy one to experience one, but take some time out, go to a dealership and just experience it. I don't just want to watch a video and kind of get the whole picture. So do watch my video, but I encourage you as well, like to go experience, like go to a dealer and just ask to test drive, go to a dealership and just look, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And if you really want one, it's going to help you plan for it. So do that. And I promise you, you will have much better buying experiences and experiences of the cars as well. And then we can talk about it. Then you can comment below and let us know, right? You'll do that. You'll do that. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Please don't forget to like. Please don't forget to comment, to subscribe. It means so much for us. Thank you guys for watching. Till next time, we'll see you then. Boom.